What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Vincent Esposito and today we are going to be talking about the methylation cycle. So chances are if you've done some digging kind of into making health changes you've probably come across either the methylation cycle or MTHFR. So we're going to break that down today because oftentimes it's confusing and even worse sometimes you might not get the full picture of what's going on or there's a lot of information misinformation that's out there about it. But before we get into that, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel below. Uh, coming out with videos every week, everything health, nutrition, wellness, longevity, gut health, plant-based recipes. Interested in any of that, you can find it here on this channel. But I'll stop rambling about that. Let's get right into the video. So first, let's define what methylation is. So methylation in its simplest form is simply taking a methyl group which is a ch3 a carbon and three hydrogen atoms attached together and transferring this group from one molecule to another in a nutshell that's really all methylation actually is now the analogy like i like to use kind of when we when i describe methylation to people is a light switch or like gears in a machine so methylation is important for turning switches on and off, and this turns certain processes on and off in the body. So if we look at the body as a machine, methylation is turning that switch on, and demethylation, so the removing of that methyl group, is turning that switch off. Now, now while the cycle itself sounds simple, there are a lot of moving parts to it, and you might want a picture as we're going along to just kind of see what's going on. But the methylation cycle is involved in over 200 different types of reactions in the body. So we're talking about things from DNA production and repair, uh, liver detoxification, we're talking about brain chemistry, immune response, hormone production, controlling inflammation, and a variety of different things. And when this methylation cycle does not function properly, any or all of these kind of mechanisms can get thrown out of whack and this could be leading to some of those symptoms. So you see quickly here how that methylation cycle is so important for a variety of different bodily functions and when it gets out of whack it affects so many different things. One really good marker for monitoring um, how well your methylation cycle is or isn't working is actually homocysteine which is an intermediate in that methylation cycle. So when homocysteine builds up when you have higher levels of homocysteine, it could mean that there's some sort of methylation cycle disruption, usually due to folate or B12 deficiencies, although well, there could be other things going on as well, considering the entire process is a bit more complex. Now, when the methylation cycle is not functioning properly, let's go over some of the ways that it could really affect a variety of different systems. So for example, the methylation cycle is important for glutathione production, and glutathione is the master antioxidant in the body, needed in the liver to help break down toxins so they could be then excreted via bile, stool, or urine. It's also important for sulfation pathways in phase two detoxification in the liver. The methylation cycle also plays a role in coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10 production, which is really important for maintaining high levels of energy and good heart health. It is also responsible for the production of melatonin, which is really important for proper sleep and maintaining good circadian rhythms, which affect a variety of different functions of the body, including digestion, hormone production, and you can see how this starts kind of spiraling out of control. Other neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine are also affected by the functioning of the methylation cycle. So when that cycle's out of whack, you can get kind of disrupted production of these neurotransmitters. Now this can happen due to a variety of things. It could be a MTHFR mutation, so a genetic mutation in the enzyme responsible for making kind of this process go, or it could be due to some gut issues, which could then lead to anxiety and depression. For example, serotonin is mostly made in the gut, and when there's gut dysbiosis, there seems to be a link between anxiety and depression and poor gut health and you would see that when you affect things like serotonin and dopamine production. So a couple other compounds that are directly affected by the methylation cycle include nitric oxide which is really important for blood vessel dilation. 
So this is particularly important for those, uh, say, with heart disease or erectile dysfunction as this plays a role in expanding arteries. L-carnitine is really important for shuttling fatty acids into mitochondria, which are the powerhouses of the cell, so that the mitochondria can get the raw materials they need to produce energy. So if L-carnitine production is kind of shut down, that could affect energy levels, and that's where you get things like fatigue, lethargy, and things like that. Cysteine and taurine production are also affected in the methylation cycle, and these are two amino acids that play a variety of different roles in many different bodily functions. So as you can see, if you have a disrupted methylation cycle, it could have far-reaching health effects in a variety of different areas of the body. So now let's talk about a few things that could disrupt the cycle. So let's start with Homocysteine. So I mentioned that before, homocysteine is a marker that is used as a marker for general inflammation, but also those with higher homocysteine levels are associated with having higher risks of heart disease and certain forms of cancer. The methylation cycle could get disrupted from a variety of different chronic diseases. So again, if we go back to some sort of gut issues, this could affect pr the production of certain uh, vitamins and minerals that are needed to make this methylation cycle work. Some of those vitamins include riboflavin, folate, which is the big one, particularly methyl tetrahydrofolate, sometimes shortened to MTHF or THF, so that's something to look for, as well as B12. Toxic chemical exposure is also a major reason why the methylation cycle could be disrupted. This is particularly important if you happen to live in a city or a highly dense, densely populated area. High stress levels could affect the ability of the methylation cycle to function properly as well as poor thyroid function, particularly hypothyroid. And again, the thyroid gland is basically what is known as the gas pedal of the body. So if that's working slow in say hypothyroid, then you could have a slower working methylation cycle. So let's talk about some of the major nutrients that play a role and where you can get them. So I mentioned this first one before, it's folate. And if you're consuming a standard American diet, chances are you have pretty low folate levels. The reason being, Folate is mostly found in plant food. So if you don't have folate, this whole system really isn't gonna work in the first place. You can find high amounts of folate in dark leafy greens, in foods like lentils, peas, oat bran, animal livers, if you happen to consume animal products, as well as a variety of different beans and legumes. Riboflavin is another really important vitamin for this, uh, for this cycle to work properly. And you can find this in a variety of different beans mushrooms, almonds, and green leafy vegetables. B12 is also really important for a properly functioning methylation cycle. And B12 is mostly found in animal products. So if you are plant-based, um, and chances you are, are, you are on this channel, uh, you could find it in things like sea vegetables and nutritional yeast. If you don't like those foods, then you would have to supplement with B12. And this is one of the rare cases where I would really strongly suggest supplementing if you really have an aversion to these types of foods. You also need adequate amounts of protein, so make sure you are getting enough protein in your diet on a day-to-day -day basis. And again, if you're looking for plant-based sources, I did a video on this, I will link that above here, where I go over some of my favorite plant-based protein sources. And finally, magnesium's a big one. Um, again, if you're consuming a standard American diet or anything close to it, chances are you're not getting adequate amounts of magnesium. In fact, some studies show that somewhere between 16 and 82% of those people in the United States tend to be magnesium deficient, and magnesium plays a role in a ton of different reactions in the body. Some of the major sources of magnesium are green leafy vegetables, a variety of different nuts and seeds, oatmeal, peas, figs, and okra. So those are the major nutrients you're gonna have to consider adding in forms of food, obviously, if you wanna correct this methylation cycle and you also wanna find whatever that underlying root cause is that is kind of driving this to be out of whack in the first place. And that's where you work with a doctor to find out what's going on so you can address the root cause properly. So that is the methylation cycle simplified today. So I hope this was kind of easy to follow. It is much easier to do if you have a diagram because there is a lot going on here. 
If you want more information on this, we did a podcast episode on this exact topic where Dr. Callie and I go over this stuff. I will link that below. Um, but if you did enjoy this information, and you want more, please like and subscribe to the channel. Coming out with videos every week. Again, everything, health, nutrition, wellness, longevity, plant-based recipes, gut health. Do you like that stuff? Great, because this is where you can find it. And until next time, take care and I will see you then.